Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, so this diagram, I know it looks crazy, and in many ways, it is kind of crazy. But you're going to be seeing these a lot, and so let's just talk about it. So first off, what do I have here? Well, I have right here a whole bunch of liquid, okay? I have a ton of liquid right here, and that's because I have heated it up enough that it has gone completely liquid. On the right, I have a particular um, material compound, which is cementite. It's when iron and carbon are actually bound. Like this is not carbon as an impurity. It is a you know a structure where they have bound together. They have bonds holding them together. Over here, I have austenite. That is a repeating structure of carbon and iron. Um, in this case, the carbon is not an impurity. It is actually kind of equidistant throughout it. And this is face-centered cubic. Now, over here on the far left, I have ferrite. So with ferrite, what I have there is that this is more or less just pure iron. It'll be body-centered cubic, and any carbon I have is going to be just an impurity. And up here, I have another one. We're not going to talk about that one as much. That's another possibility, um, possible um, solid phase for um, iron carbon mixtures. Okay, so there we go. We have all of this. As a note, this is percent weight carbon on the bottom. As you can see, it only gets up to 6.7, um, and that's where the cement tie, that's where we have that material compound formed between iron and carbon. Now, if I want to have you know, a transition happen. There's various places that can occur. First off, I can have a eutectic transition right here. I go from a liquid to two solids, okay? In this case, I have cementite and austenite. I also have a eutectoid transition over here, where I go from one solid to two different solids. If I want to have that eutectoid transition happen, I have to go below 727 degrees Celsius. And so this should tell you something. First off, do you normally have iron that is over 727 degrees Celsius just hanging around? The answer is, is no, you don't. Um, which means that all of the iron you have, all of the steel you have, is going to be some mixture of ferrite and cementite. And so the question we're going to ask in future videos is, well, what is that composition and how do I get all these different properties for steel um, based on how it was cooled? Does cooling it differently, slower, or more quickly change how these structures of ferrite and cementite interact? The answer is it does. It actually it changes it a lot. Okay, and last little details here. If I'm trying to go through a eutectoid transition from um, ferrite and cementite to austenite, there's particular um, carbon percentages I have to have, okay? So that means I have to have a carbon weight percent of 0 0.76 to go perfectly through the eutectoid point. Otherwise, I'm gonna have some sort of mixture as I'm going towards it. Okay. So that's a bit be it for this time. Thank you so much. And next time we're going to really focus in on looking at these diagrams and seeing how the speed at which we cool and the amount of subcooling will change the structure of our ferrite and cementite matrix. Have a good one. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.